If you've ever tried building a town in Bloxburg, you'll realize that building a town is... A lot of work. So here are 10 things that you might add to your own town. Would you look at this number? We're inching our way towards 500,000 subscribers. So I'd appreciate it if you'd just tap that red button down below to help us get a little closer. Wait a minute, don't forget to hit the like button to help support the channel. Anyways, enjoy the video. First things first, I think I should mention that you should never ever in any circumstance make all of your roads straight. Even if you are building a really, really compact city where the roads are pretty much all squared with each other, you should still try and add some roads that branch out on different angles. Adding on to that, I think it goes without saying that your buildings shouldn't all be squared with each other either. Although I probably wouldn't recommend going too crazy with this because if you've ever built in Bloxburg, you know it's a pain to build on a diagonal. But even then, I think it's worth the pain because otherwise your town would look pretty dull. Trash cans and some other miscellaneous clutter. These things can sometimes give life to your own town and make it look like it's actually inhabited by players or people. But I'd watch how far you go with this because if you go overboard, it's not gonna give the same effect. Instead, you'll probably be looking at like a junkyard or an abandoned town. Stores. Don't make every building in your town a house. Instead, you should try and make it functional by converting some of the buildings into convenience stores, laundromats, or even restaurants. In my opinion, this gives your entire town more of a purpose and the necessities for it to be called a town. Street signs and crosswalks. These also give the town a sense of functionality. Things like these are in place so it actually looks like there are rules and directions for people to follow. Although this just might be my personal opinion. Custom landscape and greenery can also add so much more to your town because of how much more life it breathes into it. You can use custom decals or just regular trees and bushes and it'll work perfectly. Well, almost perfectly. Changing up the landscape as well gives your town some elevation and a more interesting look, but I'd probably stick to one floor first if you're building a town for the first time. Otherwise, you could probably do something like this with the mansard roofs and go up to the second floor, or maybe even the third floor, but third floor makes it look super tall. Electric poles might also be considered when you're trying to fill up some space high above the buildings. Now to make these, it's not too hard, but there are some steps involved that might be a bit difficult to follow, but I'm gonna guide you through it the best I can. All you really need are these basic basic shapes and structurals, as well as this cutting board right here, so you can clone it. And then right here you have these salt and pepper shakers that act as some of like the transmitter things, but I'm not sure what those are called. To start out, you want to take your cutting board and place it somewhere on your plot. It doesn't matter where. Then you want to take your cylindrical basic shape thing and then drag it over, and you want to resize this to 15 high. The width, I think, is 7.5, or that's usually just what I go with. Once you have that, you want to copy this and place it on above. Oh yeah, and before you do try building this make sure you do have advanced placing so it goes well and then you want to resize this to 7.5 so the bottom one should be 10 high and then the top one should be 7.5 once you have that you want to take your horizontal cylinder and then resize this to about five if you want to go shorter it really doesn't matter i'm just trying to teach you how to make this and then you want to just copy and paste your cylindrical thing back on top so it looks kind of smooth once you have that you want to take your structurals let's start with the cylindrical one first the huge round rod and oh man that sounds so wrong and you just want to Go on medium placement and then drag it. So that thing will act as like one of the energy things that I have here. Once you have that, you want to go with your standard square beam. You just want to place that on a different plane compared to this cylindrical one. Just make sure it's not like directly under. Otherwise, that'll look kind of weird. So once you have that, you can probably resize this to however large you want it. You just play around with the sizes. And then we just take another one, give it some shape, make it look like a little button that's sticking out. If you can see right here and then just resize it. Once you have this, you can place your salt and pepper shakers. Let me just grab them over here onto the very top. You want two on one side and then one on the other. But if you want it to be symmetrical, you you could always go ahead and put two or maybe three or maybe four and just cover up the entire thing. Once you have that down, you just want to take your ordinary string and drag it from the base of the cutting board thing and then drag it up to your first structural. I'm just going to repaint the structurals here to make them look a bit better. You can go ahead and add two or maybe even three strings going up to the first one, but it's really up to you. It's very customizable, so you're free to do whatever you From here, you want to just go up to the bottom of the second transmitter, just like this with the ordinary string. Same thing applies here. You can drag as many ordinary strings as you want up to this. It doesn't matter where. You can make all your pulls different, but the best thing about this is that you can move it.
it wherever you want. And then for the final strings, you just want to grab them and then link them to the black pepper shakers. Just don't go overboard with the wires because then it'll look completely whack. Then you can finally add these yellow poles. They act as kind of like a protector for these wires that go into the ground. And then you're pretty much done. Last thing you might want to do is color this. It doesn't really matter what color you choose. And then once you have one done, you can practically clone it and then move it wherever you want. To connect them, you just take an ordinary string and connect the salt and pepper shakers. You can even take a string from the first transmitter and bring it all the way up to one of the pepper shakers. Once you have that done, you might even consider using a structural and making a really big fat connector right here. Of course, you can make it skinnier. I just use this big fat rod because it's convenient. Adding something like this just makes your atmosphere a little more noisy than it was before, and your town would probably look better, hopefully. If it doesn't, oh well. <laughs> Bad tip. Next up, we've got these like air conditioning units that just add a bit more to some of the building. If you're going for more of an industrial type look, then these would really make your town pop more. They serve pretty much no purpose, but hey, they, they look okay. To make these, you need the stuff laid out here. A round pillar, small decal thing with a sticker, an oak shelf, basic cube shape thing, and some round and rectangular structurals. And also this vent thing. Okay, first up's the oak shelf, and then you want to resize this basic shelf shape to match the width. For the height, you just want to go up to about 3.75, but it really doesn't matter. Depends on how big your building is. I'm going to put this vent thing up on top as well. And then this wooden wheel that's colored in white. Then you want to drag these mid-sized structurals down to act as buttons or a control panel for the air conditioner. It really doesn't matter how these look. This is just how I'm doing them. And then place this logo sticker thing next to the buttons. The decal code can be found in the description or popped up on the screen somewhere right now. On the side, I've put these little cylindrical structurals so the thing just doesn't look too boxy. Now, this is where it gets a little hard to follow. To make the wheel centered so we can make the vent, you're gonna have to do this plus shape thing with the smallest rectangular structural, and then place the wheel at the center. Then make a square outline with the same structurals, just a little thicker. This may take a while to get, but once you have the square done, you can go across with the thin structurals to make the grill part. For the finishing touches, you can add these pillars to make it look like tubes that go into the machine. You can also add another air conditioning unit above or below with the pipe on either side to make it look like they're connected. But that's pretty much it. Next up, we've got this vending machine machine inspired by Yume Cookie. Their channel will be linked in the description of the video. This is something I've added to my own town to make it a little more custom and unique. This one's actually pretty simple. To make this, you're going to want to have some basic shapes laid out, the solid, transparent, and roundish cube. You're also going to want this flower bag and a small stick-on decal. First off, you're going to start by resizing a basic shape until it's down flat. I did this using medium grid snap, and this will also make the whole machine clonable. On top of that, we're going to start building the overall shape of the machine with some basic shapes. It might be a little hard to follow, but just remember that a lot of this will be resizing basic shapes to get the right shape. And you want to play around with this until you have something that resembles this. Now this is where it gets tricky with some of the shelving. I'm just going to let the building do the talking, but it's basically the same thing with the resizing of basic shapes but this time it's in layers. In this build, I've got three shelves for the items that I'm gonna put in, but you can obviously do more if you'd like. But once we've got the shelves, all you wanna do is cap it off with a larger basic shape and a flat rounded one at the top. Once the main machine is done, you can go ahead and put whatever you want on the shelves. I'm using flower bags because they look like juice boxes, but you can use anything you want for this. Now you wanna add some stick-on stickers for the keypad and the selection parts of the machine. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the decals for this, but once again, the build is inspired by Yume Cookie, so I'm sure they've got some decals on their channel. For the collection box, I used a vertical wooden plank and I recolored it to make it darker. And then finally, you want to go in with your transparent basic shapes to make the glass part. And then a solid basic shape at the back to cover it up. Of course, you can also add some detail to the rear side of the machine to make it more realistic. Right here, I'm adding vents, wires, and a place to plug it in. It's much simpler to make than it looks. Anyways, that wraps it up for most of the tips that I have for you guys. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. But yeah, hope these help.